So we've said this before, a really kind of relentless time at the moment, every single person going through it, every single person's on a different page every day, it seems as well, and the news just seems to be getting worse and worse. Liverpool, though, in my opinion, I'm not just saying that because I'm a scouser, we do seem to, to be powering through in, in terms of, of doing things a little bit better than the rest of the country, certainly with mass testing and more uh, vaccinations going really well. And someone who's been at the forefront of all of that is our Metro Mayor. Uh, Metro Mayor of the Liverpool City Region, Steve Rotherham. Steve, thank you so much for chatting to us. No problem. So, first of all, what, what's it been like for you uh, as Metro Mayor of, of, of such a huge area for the past 12 months, personally and kind of professionally? Professionally first, it's been particularly busy because, as you've identified, there are an awful lot of pilot schemes that we've been at the vanguard of in the Liverpool City region that subsequently have been rolled out across the whole country. Uh, and and that's, that's good. Um, but, of course, we've seen those sort of ebbs and flows and the recent you know, third wave spike that we had across the city region in all six districts was a real cause for concern. And we're still seeing the results of that with the hospitalisation numbers and the pressures that's putting on, on our frontline NHS staff, who, by the way, I'm sure you'd agree and everybody else who, who's watching this would, would say have been the real heroes throughout this last 11 months or so. But on, on a personal level, I, I'd say the first time, you know, in, in March, I'd, I'd never worked from home before. So I, I, I sort of... I felt the novelty value of being at home and being able to pop out if I wanted to to get a you know a drink of juice or whatever. And the weather was good, wasn't it? If you remember back then, we had a decent spring and, and not a bad summer. So I, I sort of got through that and and didn't really fully perhaps appreciate um, that you, you're not seeing people as often as possible. And then it comes to the the sort of the third wave, you know, um, around Christmas time. Uh, and I've just, you know, I've started to realise just how difficult this has been for everybody. And that social isolation and, and working from a distance and being cocooned and almost locked up. Um, yeah, I found that much more uh, of a challenge. And I, what I do is always try to put myself into people's shoes who perhaps even haven't got a little back garden like I've got uh, and, and stuff like that. And they're probably stuck, you know, in, in tower blocks uh, and it must be awful for those people's lives. So we're trying to do everything that we possibly can one to alleviate the problems that we've got currently, but to look to the future and to look beyond even recovery to a time when we can get back to growth and really take this city region forward. I think the big thing at the minute, Steve, is everyone's kind of lost that light at the end of the tunnel. And that's what you hear a lot of. Certainly my mates, people have spoken to you through work, have said, there's no light at the end of this. Whereas last time we did have something to kind of be hopeful about. Are you hopeful at, at the moment? Because things are so dark. Is there a way out of this? And is that way out coming, coming soon, in your opinion? Oh, undoubtedly there's a way out. And we know what direction we're going in to get out of that tunnel. So at least we're, we're heading in the right direction. And sometimes I think people have wondered whether we were. Um, and, and that hope is the mass vaccination. And the great thing about what we did, and you, you mentioned about um, mass testing, mass testing wasn't for me just about mass testing. And when I spoke to, to government and, and in, in, including, I have to say, the prime minister, I was saying what we wanted to do is to demonstrate that we could do these things because we were always missed off. Let's face it, you know, our friends down the um, the East Lanks Road, they were getting a lot of these things years ago when we were literally just left behind. So I wanted to prove that we could do them things. And when we spoke to them, we were saying this gives government the opportunity to develop alongside, work with our, our combined authority and our local authorities who have been brilliant. But it, it gives us the chance then to develop that infrastructure, you know, the logistical capabilities to do other things. And that's why mass vaccination for me was the goal and does give that hope that we can get back to some sort of normality. Although I think we're going to have restrictions of sorts and certainly we're going to still have to follow the um, good housekeeping guides of, you know, hands, face, space type thing for some considerable time in the future. 
What, what's the sketch now with mass vaccination, Steve? Because I know you were fighting to get Anfield and Goodison were, were thrown in the hat in terms of being places that we could do that. Well, what is the latest with that? Will Liverpool be used to, to kind of trial that? I wasn't precious where it was. What I was saying to government is there are lots and lots of locations. You know, we've got stuff over in the Wirral, for instance. You know, they, they could use places there, including, of course, Tramia Rose. But outside the football stadium, there are things that we could have used there. Same in, in the other areas. And I was trying to explain to government that they they were having mass vaccination centres then we stood ready and willing to work with them to get more in our area. But it, for me, the messaging from the Secretary of State, who again I've spoken with recently, seems to be a bit of a, a rolling back from um, just mass vaccination centres. They are totemic, uh, let's face it, you know, Greater Manchester wants one, so so we want one as well. Well, we've got one in the Wicked Stadium in St Helens, but we want another one or another two or whatever. And actually, what we need to be looking at is the evidence of the take-up. And it might be better if we have community hubs, so, you know, embedded in their local neighbourhoods, and they might get a uh, a more quicker and uh, a more geographically and demographically spread throughput than, say, having to travel to a big centre somewhere. Steve, what's what's your life day to day? So you're at home, we're all working from home. But what's a normal day now during a pandemic? I know it's completely different to what it would have been before last March. Um, are you just constantly zooming, kind of politicians, organisations? How does it work? Give us a snapshot of what your what your day is like. Yeah, my diary is absolutely ram, but that that sounds almost immediately that that's a moan. It's not. I knew what I was going into. I'd been a national politician, I'd been in Parliament beforehand and, and the hours down there were absolutely ridiculous. Um, but I thought that the likelihood when I got back home was that there would be some free time. But of course, when you're now uh, readily accessible through Zooms and Teams and all of them sorts of things, uh, there's no free time at all. It just gets sucked up. But that's because of the intensity of this period, you know, nobody will have gone through what we've all collectively gone through in the last 11 months. And so you have to put yourself out there. And I look at, I'm not moaning about it. I stand willing and ready to, to do this. I want desperately to look beyond the, the period that we're in and look to the future. So we're developing plans that tackle the coronavirus and protect lives now. We're working with something called the Merseyside Resilience Forum and all of our emergency services and our councils. But beyond that, we're also pulling together what's called our recovery plan, which gets us back into the, the space where we can start to develop as a city region and get some of those great transformational projects over the line that we've been planning for prior to, to COVID coming on, on, on stream. I think, you know, there were so many plans, weren't there? Certainly from, from, from you and your team in terms of progress with Liverpool City region. A lot of them put on hold, a lot of them still still happening. Just give us a snapshot as, as to what we can expect in the future post-pandemic. Stuff that's happening at the moment is around digital connectivity. And four and a half years ago, when I decided to stand for the, the Metro mayoral role, um, I'd looked at, other successful areas, not just in this country, but throughout the world. And there was a place called Chattanooga, which people might know because there was a song about it that those older viewers will, will know this. And, and so that resonated with, with me. I thought, oh, Chattanooga, yeah, I've heard of that place. And I had a look at what they did. And they developed from a post-industrialised wasteland into a really thriving, progressive city. And, and when I spoke to the mayor uh, out there, um, he was explaining that it was around digital connectivity. So I wanted to do that. What happened subsequently in those you know, four years plus is that digital connectivity has become much more relevant in everybody's lives. The very fact that we're doing this, digital connectivity, the fact that people are doing distance learning, you know, both in universities, but in our schools now with that blended learning that having to do um, people who access welfare and, and, and benefits have to do that online through universal credit. And so it's really important to everyone's lives. Plus the fact is that, you know, even the older generation, they're getting a bit more savvy and they're contacting, you know, the, the daughters or sons or, or grandkids 
via FaceTime and all that. Uh, and even if it was for recreational stuff, you know, the, the party stuff that people have been doing online proves its enormous um, opportunities for us in the city of Eden to capitalise on. So I've been working and all that time and we've started to actually develop um, the, the, the plans which are today and yesterday and, and tomorrow are actually in the ground. We're putting fibre optic cables in and we're going to link up two of our assets which are the, the supercomputer that we have which is in Darnsbury, which is in Holton. So we're going to, it's called the Hartree Supercomputer. We're going to link that up with fibre optic cables that come ashore in Southport but they are our, the UK's connectivity to um, Nova Scotia, so, you know, the sort of North American continent. And by doing that, we can get ultra-fast speeds, so not super-fast, ultra-fast speeds, but we get the capacity to do big data analytics and stuff. So I'm building the infrastructure almost as an entrepreneurial state, and then we want people to come in who are... You know, the, 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 the kids who are brainy and, and savvy and look towards um, IT and tech as a challenge, I want them to come up with the applications so that we can start to build similarly uh, a, a cluster of, of IT and creatives that have benefited Chattanooga, but also Shoreditch in London. So that's the big idea at the moment. One of them, sorry. One of the one of the many. See, I, I didn't yeah. know this, but but again, this is something that will put Liverpool uh, up against you know some of the bigger cities in the country, uh, and it feels like we're really getting getting there now in in terms of being against Manchester. That was always always the thing, was it against London, and things are shifting a little bit. The pandemic seems to have shifted that a little bit more. So, so the north seems to be benefiting a, a little bit more now. Um, will that change after the pandemic in terms of London missing out and losing out on the kind of bigger projects? Well, I don't think anyone has to lose out for us to gain. I, I believe, you know, if you think about it, like the Mersey, as that rises, all the ships can rise at the same time, and I think that 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 will, you know, benefit us all. So. Uh, London's important to UK PLC, but I guess what the port of Liverpool and what we have in our area now is strategically more important than at any time since probably the 60s or 70s to the country. So I want to look towards maximising that. But I'm not competing against Greater Manchester. You know, my, my great mate is, uh, is the, the Metro Mayor of Greater Manchester. But I, I keep on saying to him, I'm not competing against you. I'm competing against the global uh, powers and superpowers, you know, you, you sort of New Yorks and, and Barcelonas and Parises and all that, that's where I think we should be pitching our tents and not necessarily trying to have a scrap with, you know, Bolton or, or, or with Leeds, you know, nothing against those areas, but we are an internationally acclaimed and recognised brand. And that's why it's called the Liverpool City Region. You know, Merseyside City Region would have worked um, Greater Merseyside City region perhaps would have worked, but actually Liverpool is a is a is a global um, door opener. I, I don't think other than London, there's there's anything that can touch us. Yeah, a lot of businesses right now, Steve, really struggling, and, and you know we, we we benefit massively from from tourism, um, leisure, hospitality, obviously, really really suffering and struggling. You, you've done a lot of work to get some funding and support to to these businesses. Forty million last October. Uh, a couple of days ago, we announced a further ten million. It's been a massive part of your your kind of challenge, but also something you've you've really got behind uh, in terms of the city region is that business support for these small businesses right now, isn't it? Because some people won't understand what a combined authority is or a metro mayor, and there's always the confusion, wasn't it, that we had two mayors in Liverpool, and I'm not the mayor of Liverpool. It's the, the brand Liverpool that we use. It's a city region. It's six districts, 1.6 million people. And so the idea is that I go and battle on our behalf to try and get a fairer share of funding from central government. Notice I said fairer, not fair, because if I got a fair one, we would be in clover. Believe me, we'd get tens, if not hundreds of millions of pounds every single month. Um, and what we need is to, to be competing within the UK for those limited funding pots. And that's why we have this pipeline of projects that I, I mentioned earlier. Uh, and so I went and, and, and won some money 
And what I don't want that to do is to sit in any bank accounts for the, the combined authority. I want that out there helping businesses. And, and there were two groups that were severely impacted. I mean, sort of the visitor economy massively, and I'm talking about the wider visitor economy. Um, but there was also 3 million people in the UK that the government completely missed out on called the excluded and forgotten. So lots of freelancers, self-employed, even some company directors of limited companies. And we wanted to do something there as well. So we've tried to distribute as much funding as we possibly can, but there's a, a limitation on, on the ability of local authorities because they're having to do so much um, that they literally are trying to get about, I don't know, 10 or 15 funding streams out the door and they all have to be checked to make sure that we're not wasting public money, that nobody's ripping us off, that, you know, um, we, we can go back to, to governments and say we are absolutely assured that that money is being spent appropriately. And, and that's why it's taken a little bit longer than we'd all liked uh, for it to have got out. But we're the only area in the whole country that's done this, you know. We're the only ones who have looked at these sectors and pumped money into them because I've always believed the best way which we can aid our recovery is to stop businesses going bang now because if we keep them alive, then when we do return to that point, hopefully in the next few months, we'll have an infrastructure, we'll have a business ecosystem that we can say, okay, look, let's hit, hit the floor running and let's start to take off again because that, that's genuinely where I think we were just a few months ago. What would you say to anyone now? Anyone who's got a small business, a restaurant, maybe you know, a new attraction, a hair salon, whatever, within Liverpool City region, what would you say to them in terms of keeping going and keeping keeping hopeful, and positive? Well, I'd say I know that you're doing everything to survive. Um, I get letters every single day, uh, heartfelt and, and heartbreaking letters from people who um, are really, really struggling in, in in these times. We're doing everything that we possibly can but I would need billions for uh, us to be able to support every business that I want to. And so there's not enough money, but what we're trying to do is to, to keep as many going as we possibly can. And not, not just the big businesses, we're talking about the SMEs, we're talking about even the micro businesses that we've put our funding into, because that's we believe that that's where we'll grow again. Uh, what I would say is that is that light at the end of the tunnel that we spoke about before, um, this hope for the future. And if we can get over this next bump in the road, then there's every likelihood that we will start to return to, to growth. Uh, and that's really where the economy will start to take off again. Okay, well, listen, we're going to put all the details of those those grants, the further support yes. online on the guide, liverpool.com. Uh, uh, Steve, another personal question. What, what have you missed most uh, throughout the whole pandemic throughout lockdown what's the one thing that you can't wait to, to do again well my family watches your program so they'll all say uh, he's going to say it's the family and of course it is but just to wind them up it's also um not being able to go to match <laughs> um, that was my catharsis you know i was able to to go with mates you know uh just all nettling into the ground and all that sort of stuff and you can shout and scream at the referee and get rid of a lot of your tension uh, and of course I missed the opportunity to watch you know Liverpool lifting the Premier League trophy that I prayed that we would lift again for 30 years and, and that was a, a that's a big blow but it's the same for everybody of course who, who's a is a big red um, I, I want to all of our teams to do well. Not, I don't just mean Everton and Tram here. We've got um, rugby teams as well in, in our area and we've got lots and lots of you know athletics teams and everything else. So I want sport to be that way in which we can all get healthier, we can all enjoy ourselves and hopefully we can see more people from our, our city region as well becoming more successful because that, that really is the, uh, the big prize, isn't it, for us all? Do you know what? I had a funny feeling he would he would say the match, and I think many people have have missed uh, Anfield, Goodison, and, and just that atmosphere, haven't they? And um, those days will will come back. Steve, ju just finally, just just give us your message to anyone watching now in Liverpool City region, sat at home, uh, struggling through the, this this third lockdown. What what would you say to them? We've been through a, a very very long and arduous period, and, and probably um, most people will know somebody 
who's either had COVID or that we've lost through COVID and have lost people that I know, um, both through COVID and other things. You know, Jerry Marsden, as you know, was a great friend of mine and I, I miss him dearly. Um, but there are um, lots and lots of opportunities for us to try to get out of this and we're trying to maximise them in the Liverpool City region. So hopefully it's not going to last an awful lot longer and then we can start to return to a normal life as reasonably as practicable because we're going to have to still, I think, socially distance and continue to wash our hands and, and wear face coverings, for instance, on public transport and other areas. But that's a small price to pay, isn't it? If we can get back to being able to, to go out, to go and see concerts, to go and have a meal and, and, and a, perhaps a drink, to meet up with friends to go to match, um, but just to travel around the, the beauty of the Liverpool City region, there are some real gems that people won't have seen in their lifetimes or they haven't seen for a long time. When we do get back to that, let's not waste that. Let's you know embrace the opportunity to really enjoy everything that this wonderful place that we're fortunate enough to have been born in or, or, or certainly to have come and started to live in, but let, let, let's take advantage of all that and let's stick together because our solidarity is really important. And let's try to get back to where we'd started to um, be just 12 months ago as that forward face and really progressive and inclusively growth, uh, growing city region. That, that's what we can do if we all stick together. You know what, really inspiring words, wise words. Uh, Metro Mayor of Liverpool City Region, Steve Rotherham, thank you so much, mate. Appreciate it. Thanks, mate.